Hello, everybody. Just going to wait for another minute or two for any last people to come on. All right, we seem to be holding fairly steady, so I might, um, oh, bit of an uptick, but anyway, I'll get started um, fairly shortly here. So welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Eric. I work for um, a trading organization called Academy XI. Um, before I kind of go into uh, who we are and uh, what today's session is all about, um, just wanted to acknowledge the traditional um, custodians of this land uh, on which we're gathered and, uh, and pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, so again, thanks and welcome. Um, so I'll start off by talking a little bit about Academy XI and who we are um, and what we do. So we are a, um, uh, a specialist training provider. Um, broadly, what we teach is uh, design and digital disciplines. Um, and so we're like, we're sort of specialists in those areas and we use, uh, online training formats to deliver that. Um, so we use two different learning management systems uh, ourselves um, to deliver things like product management, um, user experience design, um, service design, uh, digital marketing, um, agile, quite a few things in, in that sort of area. Um, so we use learning management systems. We're about 50% virtual uh, training versus 50% uh, face-to-face training, usually, um, not at the moment, obviously. Um, but today we actually have a guest speaker. Um, his name is Dean Saunders. Um, he is the CEO of eCreators and I would call him a, um, an ed tech specialist, possibly even a guru. Um, and he sort of works with learning management systems all the time. Um, for the past 13 years that the business has been running. And so he's amassed, um, a great deal of knowledge in terms of how to bring training into the online space during that time. So I'm going to uh, pass over to him quite shortly, um, just in terms of what the agenda for the session will be. Um, we're going to have Dean speaking, um, sharing some of his tips and tricks for about a half hour. Um, we've got the Q&A button, um, question and answer button down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so while he's talking, uh, feel free to fire any questions that you have in there. And uh, I'll be kind of monitoring that as we go. Um, and then at the end of the uh, sort of a prepared session. Um, I'll then be asking some of my questions and some of your questions to Dean as well so that he can respond um, to flesh out your understanding of some areas that you have an interest in. So um, without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Dean. Okay. Okay, thank you for that uh, introduction there, Eric. Uh, you can hear me probably, but uh, nobody can see me at the moment. I'm not sure that's a bad thing or not, but uh, apparently my host has disabled my video. So I'm just gonna jump into my slides uh, instead. Um, yeah, that's okay. You don't need to see me. Uh, maybe that'll come back later uh, and I can uh, make a more face-to-face -face type intro. Thanks for coming along today. Um, I want to... Uh, Obviously, make sure you get as much value uh, out of this session as possible. So, um, hang on, that's not working out, it's okay. Um, as much value out of this session as possible. So, what we've put together here uh, essentially is a bit of a, a toolkit, if you like. So, uh, whatever stage you're sort of at in your online journey, uh, certainly you'll get a lot of value out of it if you're just sort of getting started. Um, if you're halfway through it, if you're uh, more further into it, uh, then certainly. Uh, you will get um, uh, some some key takeaways from there. Um, sorry, uh, uh, Mariana, I think uh, it's the other account you need to. That's the one. Okay, no, it's still disabled over there. Ah, there I am. You should be able to see me now. Perfect. There we go. Uh, everybody happy. So uh, let's uh, get stuck into it. Um, so yeah, we are e-creators and we create uh, bespoke uh, creative learning solutions. So. We work with a range of organizations right across the world. So from organizations like, uh, from as small as mum and dad type organizations up to 
uh, defense organizations to uh, emergency services. Uh, companies like Electronic Arts uh, use us to create a lot of their content. Um, and we're sort of based all over the world. Well, we have resources and, and clients all over the world. So we service about three and a half million users per annum and have uh, our resources in about 36 different countries. Um, so what I want to talk to you today to is about everything from uh, nose to tail, if you like, beginning to end. Um, so a lot of organisations, especially at this, in this sort of current climate, are sort of saying, well, where do we start? How do we get stuff, uh, stuff on, uh, online uh, as quick as possible? Um, and all that starts with the, the planning of your journey, obviously. So these are some of the things that we should be looking at before we actually pick up the tools, if you like. So before we actually start anything, you might have probably heard of the, uh, the old uh, carpenter's adage, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, this is certainly that, that measurement phase. So before you even start with tools or um, storyboards or any of these wonderful things, you know, think about who the learners really are. So build up what we call a, a learner persona. Uh, I should also mention at the end of this too, uh, we're going to make available to everybody who's attended a, a toolkit, uh, and that toolkit will contain a few of the resources we've spoken about today. So some storyboard samples, some uh, samples of content that we've built, um, some little showcases and bits and pieces, some resources and things to sort of help you on your way. Um, obviously important to uh, concentrate on those educational outcomes. And there's really three things that you're trying to do when you build an e-learning course. Uh, you're either trying to create awareness, uh, awareness of a, of, a, of a new procedure or a topic or, or whichever. You're trying to build skills. So it might be a new CRM or something you're deploying inside your organisation where uh, there's no knowledge that exists. So you need to build those skills uh, from scratch. Or you may be trying to change behaviour. Um, so people are doing it this way now, you want them to be doing it that way. How do we do that? Um, obviously with that, we create educational pieces. Um, determining what the size of the course is also very important. A lot of organisations will try and pile everything into uh, as much time as they can possibly uh, gather without thinking about the, the learner and how long that piece of content is going to take. So we do encourage you to sort of chunk down uh, learning into, into smaller modules. So, so if it's a, a one hour course, perhaps cut it down to part one, two and three. Uh, and think about the physical size of the course too. So with all the resources and audio and video and things you might be putting in, what's the, the technical size of that course? We don't want it to be gigabytes and gigabytes because otherwise in everybody's mobile devices and the like, it's gonna take forever uh, to download. Um, Take a look at the material uh, we, we have here, the, the source material, and really what I'm talking about here is subject matter experts. So uh, quite often you'll find uh, an SME will be happy to give you as much information uh, as they possibly can, but really to uh, determine at this stage uh, what part of that information is actually useful. Um, so this is where we're, we're looking at, um, looking forward to our learning objectives and think, thinking of thinking the, the real key things that uh, our learners need to know. So. Uh, it's one of those decision making processes you go through where you determine you know, the importance of uh, what's out as well as in. Um, think of the kind of interactive and uh, multimedia um, elements you want in your, in, your, in your course. Do you want audio? Do you want video? Do you want sound effects? Now, all these little things can um, help the learning experience to a large extent. Too much of them can sometimes hinder, uh, but it's important to think about which ones you actually want. Um, and then where are your resources best deployed? What resources inside your organisation can you take advantage of? Now, if you're a one-man show or a one-person show, that's a bit harder, but there are places you can go. So taking advantage of the gig economy, for example. Um, if you're uh, producing uh, large amounts of content and you're a one-person inside a large organisation, well, maybe marketing can help you out with style guides or templates or design, any of those wonderful little assets. Um, there's four different levels that I'll generally speak about uh, when we're uh, developing content at eCreators. Um, and they start from over here at the top left. So uh, level one is what we call uh, basic interaction. So there's text, there's scrolling, there's a little menu to help you out. Uh, there's limited interaction if you like. Um, the second one we talk about is level two. And level two, we can get a bit more fancy. Uh, level one is very much form-based stuff. And I'll talk about the tools that we uh, use to create these assets very shortly. Uh, level two, though, we get a bit more fancy. We've got you know, drag and drop interactions. We've got click and reveal. We've got um, more ad advanced and e easier use of sound and video and uh, the ability to embed assets. That. <clears throat> Whereas level three, we're full on here. Uh, level three, we're 
creating game-based learning, lots of big complex branching scenarios, uh, virtual characters, um, a lot of storytelling and these sorts of elements uh, embedded into those types of courses. And level four, uh, and again, I'll show you some really cool uh, VR tools uh, very soon, but level four allows us to use what we call real-time interaction. So that's where we're using, <coughs> excuse me, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality uh, and getting people um, you know, really immersed into the scene or into the learning. So the right tools, uh, and you know, this is um, uh, one of those foundation things that you need to figure out. What tools are you going to be comfortable with and, and can you produce the result you want from the tools you select? So um, this is a collection of, of sort of standard tools to really good in the rapid authoring space. So when we look at these tools, we're looking at um, tools like uh, H5P, which is a, a free tool. Um, we've got uh, really well-known tools like Articulate. So there's Articulate Rise, which is a you know, sort of a range of $60 a month type tool, which is really, really good if you're just getting started because all the hard work's done for you. All you're really doing is putting you know, information in, into your template. Um, next one there is Articulate 360, uh, which gives you access to more. So to video editors, to uh, more complex tools. Gomo is another form-based type learning tool. Um, if you game, you can try Adobe Captivate, which gives you um, some more advanced responsive features, helps out a bit with uh, accessibility and the like, and it'll give you that extra step. And if you're interested in playing around in the VR space, um, don't be scared, I guess is the best thing you, I can say, in that Scenario VR is a really, really easy to use tool that allows you to take a photo, uh, make it become a, uh, a, 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 an interactive type environment, um, and it gives you sort of the best of, um, of, of what some of those more advanced uh, uh, VR development tools uh, use. So some of those really good features. And you can have interactive assessments in there. We've used them before for things like emergency services, for example, where you might have a photo of uh, an area burning and say, right, where are the areas that I should be attending to first? And the fireys can sort of interact with them. So plenty of uh, great places to, to take advantage of those. Um, a couple of other little points there. Obviously, um, taking advantage of free resources. There's a little place called eLearning Heroes, for example. Uh, you know, eLearning Developers in Capes. Sounds really exciting. Um, but, uh, you know, these sorts of places have a lot of free resources, templates, things you can download. You can, you can, you can burn a lot of time if you're constantly searching or constantly trying to create these interactions. So a lot of the time you can download them, manipulate them and make them your own. And they're all copyright free. You can use them for as long as you like, they become yours. So it's, it's the beauty of having these great communities. Um, I spoke about, uh, you know, that measure twice, uh, cut once, I sort of method before. Uh, and here's where we sort of create uh, the storyboard. So it's in the storyboard that we figure out, you know, what type of story we're trying to tell. Um, you know, what, do, what sort of experience do we want the learner to have? Um, how are we going to give them a, the best opportunities to learn and to practice those skills? Uh, and it's in this um, design phase that we figure all those, those wonderful things out. Uh, we want to uh, obviously um, determine whether or not learners have the same experience when they pick up the tools or whether they pick up the course. So you might have an example where you're doing a course which is uh, Finance 101 uh, and everybody from the, the CFO needs to do it right down to, say, the help desk staff. Uh, you know, obviously, the, uh, the, the CFO will have a, a different experience when it comes to Finance 101. So can they jump straight to the assessment, perhaps? Do you want to allow that functionality? Or do you want everybody to take exactly the same path? And it's in the storyboard phase that we determine these things. It's also here, obviously, that we, we look at um, uh, the learning objectives for the course. We look at the assessment for the course. And generally, a good way to think about design, this is a, a little tip, is uh, no more than three to four learning objectives per course. And then at the end of the course, no more than two to three um, assessment questions per learning objective. So uh, you're not sort of overloading them with, with too much inf information. You're giving them multiple chances to, to demonstrate their understanding. Um, and obviously set the tone of the course too. So do you want it to be very bland and read the information, click next? Uh, or do you want it to be something a little bit more exciting? Um, so how can we make it engaging? Well, a lot of people ask this question, they go, oh, engaging e-learning, how do we make it engaging? Well, a lot of it's about um, being more clever uh, rather than anything else. And so I mentioned before about, you know, not spending great amounts of time on building, you know, uh, massive assets and uh, burning all your time and, and not really being focused on 
uh, the important thing, which is the, the, the learning outcome. So, uh, you know, a, a basic way to achieve engagement might look something like this. We've just got a little sample here, which I'll, I'll sort of show you. But so here we've got um, a nice little piece of stock video uh, in, in, the, in the background there. Um, we've got some nice text and branding. Obviously, when you're talking about organisations, so if you're developing for organisations or you're developing internally, it's important to respect that brand. And then think about some of the assets you can use. So you have a nice little start button. We've got a video. So this uh, is, of course, the New South Wales government. So you get a video there uh, that you can play, which is In one of their videos. 347 people died on our roads. What would be a more acceptable number? Um, acceptable? 70, maybe? Probably 70. Can you say 70? Actually, this is what 70 people looks like. So, so I won't go through that all that video, but um, what we've sort of done there is obviously created that nice little plain introduction. We've got a video which is a nice emotional piece, and uh, to create a good emotional piece, you can just use images and some you know some nice music in the background uh, at the end of the day. But it really draws the learner in and gets their attention. Uh, and then we go more into the template, and you know you don't want to overcomplicate the the user interface. We have a saying at eCreators: if you have to explain how to use an interface, that's not a good interface. So keep it really simple. Just give the learners the tools they need. So here we've got. Uh, audio, we've got some resources they can download, uh, they can save and exit so they can come back uh, at any stage, and then basic navigation down the bottom here. And then throughout the course, we've got different tools they can use to navigate. So this looks really clean and, and nice and pretty and all the rest, and it's pretty, pretty easy to do as well, pretty easy to put together. So this is just a basic template where we've defined what those borders are, if you like. So the branding in the left, uh, some nice little color graphics and bits and pieces. Again, this is all stock stuff. Uh, if you've got the ability to do it in-house, you can certainly draw your own assets. Uh, we, we do a lot of that at eCreators. Uh, but here you can see, okay, so here's my instruction. Click the car remote uh, to unlock the most common reasons young drivers have accidents. Great. So I can click on that. You know, subtle little things. So that subtle little sound effect there. And then we jump into some of the text. Um, this is a bit of a mix of, you know, things you can put in courses, but, you know, this is a, another way to, to, quote, to quote statistics. So, uh, if you don't want pages and pages of text, you want to be using elements uh, that allow you to explain things in very simple ways. So, we can see here, you know, how many L-plate uh, fatalities there are, um, how many P-plates, so we can highlight that section of the graph, um, how many uh, provisional P-platers. So, uh, you can really... Um, draw the learner's focus to specific stats at, uh, at any one time using a variety of methods. And when you're using these uh, rapid development tools and the like, these things really are uh, just basic fade-ins and the like. So you're not you know, uh, creating uh, big massive Photoshop files and all these wonderful things. They're the elements that are built into your tools. So the tools are designed to make things uh, very, very easy. So Here's another piece of, um, uh, of, of overlay, for example. So here we've got just a graphic where you can see the windscreen might have been cut out there. And if we play the video, we get the feeling that we're driving along the road. So you sort of get what I'm, uh, where I'm coming from there uh, and in creating some of, those, some of those assets. Again, these uh, little files too will be, uh, let's get my presentation back there. Uh, will be available in the uh, in the toolkit um, when we get back there. So let me get back into there. There we go, back again. So yeah, when you're uh, considering um, making those assets and the like, uh, it's important to think about you know uh, what types of things that your learner is going to respond to the best. So always um, take those into account. Whoops. Looks like my driving is a little bit off as well. Okay, so what are the elements or the important uh, parts of the course and where are you spending the most time when you're developing content? Um, again, most of it's in the storyboarding. Uh, so it's really in the design of the course, figuring out what graphics you use, how much information is going to be used, how much information is going to be into one, into one screen. So you're doing most of your work uh, throughout the development process, as you can see here, in that storyboarding phase. Then when we go into the build phase, which is the alpha phase or the first cut of your course, it's probably half or less than half. So your, your big effort's done here. Uh, then we move into the beta, which is the second course, uh, second cut of your course, and then finally to gold. Now, inside all these little gaps here are review processes. 
So uh, it's always good to have either another person or another team or another colleague uh, to, to do these reviews for you. Um, the worst thing you can do is review your own work uh, because you will miss things, you'll write things in a certain way that perhaps you like, that perhaps a wider audience won't. So figure out, um, certainly during that design phase, um, uh, who's going to be your review team or your peer review uh, or the person who's um, maybe even helping you uh, develop the course. So you can bounce ideas off each other. And storyboards don't need to be you know, war and peace. Uh, there's three different methods we use at eCreators. Uh, one of those is very visual. So there's a lot of illustrations and in this one, you can sort of see a very rough diagram about how a pump uh, releases the same amount of insulin as, as glucose uh, into the bloodstream. So how, how is that animation going to work? Uh, over here, you've got a very Microsoft Word driven uh, type template. So you've got to, the information that's going to appear on screen here, uh, the types of graphics that you might want to use uh, to present that information. Uh, and then down the bottom, uh, you can use tools like, uh, if you want to create really hi-fi and really interactive type storyboards, there's tools like Adobe XD. So Adobe XD is typically designed, uh, guys at Academy XI would probably use tools like this, but Adobe, Adobe XD allows you to create fully interactive storyboards. So um, a lot of the time, if you're talking to internal stakeholders and saying, hey, this is what we're going to design, they'll look at this and go, I've got no idea what you're talking about. But with Adobe XD, you can take it to almost the full extent. So you can go and um, pre-purchase, if you like, you know, watermarked images so before you actually buy the images and invest in those. So there's no waste. You can say, right, this is the image I've got in mind. These are the images we'll use, the, the layouts, the fonts and all the rest. So you can uh, get the idea and the concept across without going to the, uh, the initial investment. You can do that more in the alpha stage. Um, so again, uh, uh, asking yourself, um, just a little checkpoint there, uh, who uh, those learners are is really important in developing that uh, persona. Um, what's the client's uh, style? So what are you, what's your audience made up of? This is really important. So uh, for example, if you've got um, uh, you know, uh, an audience which is a group of surgeons, well, the, right, the way you might write to a group of surgeons will be very different to a way you might, the way you might write to a, a, a call center crew, for example. So a call, call center crew might respond to things that are very, very conversational and a bit looser language, whereas um, the surgeons are more used to highly structured uh, language with supporting diagrams and those sorts of things. So uh, it's good to sort of really do that early investigation into your audience. Um, engaging in industry, again, you can use a, a method, you can use animation, you can use interaction, you can use video, you can use video interaction. Again, that tool that I mentioned before, H5P, uh, which you can download for free, um, is really good at creating interactive video scenarios that can be read by your LMS uh, and those sorts of things. Um, do some research. It's, it's always good to go to different places. I know our content team uh, at eCreators, well, pre-COVID, um, spent a lot of time uh, going to different places. So as a team, they might go to an art gallery, for example, just to look at you know, what the latest uh, trends are in different types of design, but you really can find inspiration anywhere. So if you can find conferences to go to or, or public spaces to go to or public art shows, you'll pick up little bits and pieces uh, in your own sort of design toolkit. So it's good to uh, look at that. Certainly look at you know, UI trends. So uh, if you type into Google, you know, UI designs for e-learning, you'll get millions of responses these days. So have a look at what other designs people are making and you know, take bits and pieces and, uh, and make, make them your own. Then also look at uh, free resources. So there's plenty of places like uh, Pixabay, uh, P-I-X-A Bay is a great place to get free uh, images and free video that you can use. So you don't have to pay you know, $30 an image through Shutterstock or through Getty Images or any of those places. You can um, uh, get a lot of great imagery and the like for uh, very low cost or, or nothing at all. Um, think of interaction. And I talk about uh, the rules of interaction uh, fairly broadly at the moment, but uh, interaction can, can actually hinder the learning uh, process if, if, there's, if there's too much. So what do I mean by that? Um, if you have a 20-minute piece of content, for example, um, uh, that could have taken 10 minutes to do and the interactions were taken out, you've more or less wasted a lot of that learner's time. And a lot of the time, uh, our learners are time poor, so they need to get through content uh, in a fairly uh, rapid sort of way. Uh, so think about uh, how you might be able to uh, decrease that time. Um, think about uh, how meaningful they are. Like if you've got 
Uh, we saw the car interactions before, for example. So it makes sense that relative to safe learner driving. So you wouldn't use something like a, I don't know, a, a, a farmyard interaction or whatever. So make sure everything makes sense. Um, obviously make sure they're mobile compatible. Uh, most learners, and I say in excess of 60% these days, prefer to do the learning, learning on some sort of mobile device, so be that an iPad or an iPhone or a uh, Galaxy Tab or whichever. Um, so make sure that they are responsive and, and they can be published as responsive without you having to do uh, too much work. Um, also, make sure they have a degree of, um, of sociality. So I jumped ahead there. Uh, so, you know, learning uh, doesn't just take place in the course. You know, there needs to be some pre-learning perhaps that they can do and then somewhere or some way that they can follow up on the learning. So they can find out uh, new information from somewhere, they can uh, collaborate in forums or groups, there's a place for them to ask questions based on the content. Remember, everybody's going to be consuming the content uh, from, from their own perspective, so somewhat differently. So uh, give them those avenues. A clever little fun way to do that is QR codes. So there's a free, or there's plenty of free QR code generators online. So you might have inside one of your slides, you know, you want to know more about um, eCreators uh, values, uh, click on scan me now with your mobile to do that. Uh, obviously not hopeful, hopefully they're doing that on the mobile device, but um, if you were to scan this QR code now, for example, on your own phones, that would take you to our website. So um, it, could, it could take you to another course, it could take you absolutely anywhere. So think of fun, interactive ways to do that. Um, here's a couple of other little screen designs uh, I just wanted to share with you. And again, I'll, I'll share this deck so you can have a, a closer look at these and what they do. But um, this is a, a basic sort of animation type um, sample where you know the, the little plus signs in here control the flow of instrument into the machine and we can again using clever fades and things uh, show or demonstrate movement. Uh, these are pre-built templates too so you can click on the topic and the information uh, appears to your right. Uh, again uh, you can have as many or as few of these as you like uh, within your own course. Navigation is slightly different so it's this back and right um, uh, a, a type, type feel rather than the traditional next in the bottom corner. Um, a bit more colourful down here as well, some sort of click on click and reveal uh, type exercises. Whoop. Keep jumping ahead there, my mouse is very sensitive obviously. Um, <clears throat> and some more basic stuff is here as well too, it, it also shows this progress indicator as to how far you might actually be through a course. Uh, learners like to know that. They like to know how long have I got to go, okay, it's only another five screens, I'll stick around, or I might jump out now and come back and complete it later. So uh, progress um, indicators, whether they be like this or whether they be you know, by a number, page one of 25 or whichever, they're a good thing to throw out to the learners to let them know how much of a time they've got in front of them. Um, again, so when you're going into uh, that development stage, Obviously, see what's possible, see what's out there. Again, there's plenty of good examples. I mentioned eLearning Heroes before. You can go to eLearning Brothers. I've got a lot of good examples of uh, courses that are possible. We'll provide some of those for you in the, in the toolkit as well. Um, look at explainer videos. There's plenty of good uh, explainer type videos out there. Uh, you can join online communities. Um, again, think of those uh, animations that you might want to use as well. Um, there's lots out there, but uh, how complex do you want to get? Can things be reused? I mean, you don't want to be spending, you know, 20 hours building one animation uh, for, to, to demonstrate perhaps one little thing. Uh, can you reuse that asset if you do build it? Uh, again, the UI has to be simple, has to be responsive, and it has to be intuitive. So again, remember, if you have to explain that UI, it's not a good eye, uh, UI. Um, be smart with your navigation as well too. So there's an old saying, it's an old marketing saying that uh, when you think of screen design, it should be like a Z. Uh, and why should it be like a Z? Because generally your branding will be up here, over to the right you'll have a menu or some more important information. You might have a handy tip down in the bottom left here. Then over to our right, that's traditionally where you turn a page. So you naturally, your hand sort of naturally goes over there and, and pulls the information across. Um, so think about those design layouts when you're, when you're building uh, your courses. Here's some more standard sort of um, uh, developments, a couple of different levels here. So here we can see uh, with Electronic Arts, you, know, you get the chance to choose a character, that you can use that character all the way through your course. Um, you might use it in the first course, you might change characters next course. What we find too is a lot of learners uh, want to go in and see, you know, um, okay, so what's the competitive achievers uh, view of the content? What does their branch look like uh, compared to the passionate belonger? 
So they'll actually want to go back and learn and see those different journeys. Um, this is more simulation based uh, software. So figuring out, you know, how to fill in a timesheet uh, in this case. So we use simulation software like Adobe Captivate uh, uh, to record those types of screens. At a really basic level, if you're a Mac user, you can just use the screen record tool uh, in QuickTime as well uh, to, to produce a really quick, you know, really good looking result. Um, over here, a little bit more uh, uh, complex, we've got, you know, the ability to open doors and change the states of these doors once they are clicked on. Uh, we've got some uh, revolving stats mechanisms, hard to see these at the moment because they're, they're flat images, um, but you get the idea. And then here we click on the family members to see their uh, stories or different results in this particular uh, uh, course as well. So, you know, really different types of approaches for different types of industries and different types of um, outcomes. Um, big one to make sure uh, of too is accessibility. And I wanted to sort of touch on that in that, um, sorry, my slides keep on jumping all over the place. Uh, does it need to be accessible? And it's an important one. So uh, does your course need to be viewed by people with visual um, uh, disabilities? Does it need to be, are there auditory disabilities? So do you need to provide subtitles for your courses? A lot of courses these days will automatically uh, give you subs. Uh, if you upload your video to YouTube, it'll give you subs uh, uh, automatically. Um, do you need to be able to change the color of the interface? Uh, to be able to um, publish those. Now, some of these e-learning tools will give you uh, accessibility out of the box. Others you'll need to spend a bit more time on. Uh, little other tips as well as uh, when, when you're using videos, now, videos can be really big. It's great to use videos. Obviously, we're using more and more of them now as well too. So um, it's where to use them and where they're hosted. So where you can embed the video. So what that generally means is the video lives on YouTube or Vimeo or somewhere in the cloud and it links into your course. So what that'll give you is a better learning experience for the learner in that uh, it has to be streamed in rather than having this great big huge SCORM file uh, that you need to, uh, need to um, uh, bring into your LMS. And obviously where you can too, uh, think of knowledge checks. So where can you embed knowledge checks uh, throughout your course. I mean, one of the ways to think about uh, assessment is assessment doesn't have to be the traditional method where it's, you know, your learning objectives up front and there's all this information and then there's an assessment at the end. You can have questions throughout the course uh, to help them, you know, uh, have, have a better chance, if you like, at actually getting the, the, the information right. You know, if you've got an e-learning course, which is 40 minutes uh, in duration, well, it's pretty tough to sort of ask them uh, a question based on that content they covered 40 minutes ago because with e-learning we're obviously compressing that uh, uh, seat time as well too so a lot of a lot more information can go in. Uh, these are just a couple more uh, examples these are case study type examples this is a different way to sort of use assessments um, uh, where you're sort of putting the learner into, into a situation and they're sort of playing the third person type of type view like you would in uh, games and the like. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is a 3D animation tool, a tool called Adobe Fuse. Um, so if you want to get uh, really, really complicated, I won't sort of throw all these you know, tools at you now, uh, but uh, Adobe Fuse is a really good 3D uh, animation tool. So if you've got characters, who they drawn or photographed or whichever that you want to bring to life, uh, that can be a really good tool to use. So what does the future look like? Um, well, the future is sort of uh, now. We're suddenly rapidly you know, using all this stuff. I mean, um, uh, certainly aug augmented reality uh, is here. Let's play that little video. I um, hope it's not too loud. So, you know, we're seeing um, a lot of this sort of stuff. So we build a lot of stuff for mining industries, for example. This is some VR uh, type stuff where it's trackable stuff. This is actually a fireman wearing a, a 360 camera on his, on his helmet. Um, you know, some car based stuff. There's even full repositories of um, uh, 3D assets that you can download from 3D libraries. Uh, again, some of those are free. Uh, again, uh, some of those are, are paid type courses. So you've got um, a whole heap of stuff you can sort of use uh, there. It's good fun to use some of this stuff inside your courses as well too. So why not have a, a 3D map of your office in your induction program or a 3D model of, of something you're building uh, for, for one of your courses? If you can have those assets and uh, you may have the, the luxury of a little bit more time to, to play in that space, that's a, that's a great thing. 
Okay, so I want to summarise there. Um, I know I'm trying to cram a lot of information into your heads at the moment too, and I could really talk all day on this stuff. There's a there's probably a lot more I've got to say and a lot more I can sort of show you, but um, we are um, uh, running to a time frame, so I respect that. Um, always be learning, I guess. It might sound you know a bit like, oh, yeah, yeah, um, but it's not hard to learn something new every day. You know, find uh, some good blogs, some good forums to sort of uh, sign up to, maybe get an email a week or a day or whatever you can sort of commit to. Um, but yeah, try to um, learn some of these tips and tricks. There's plenty of free free tips and tricks out there. Obviously take advantage of, uh, of those rapid authoring tools. So they're low cost, they're easy to start uh, using and picking up straight away. Uh, again, you can look at a lot of those samples uh, on things like eLearning Heroes um, and get a bit of an idea as to where to start, you know. Uh, you can get sort of you know, like the painter's block when they look at a, a blank canvas, you know, what's the first stroke I'm going to take? It's the, exactly the same when you're creating content. What am I, what am I going to put on my first screen? Um, implement that uh, development process as well too. So we spoke about that before with our storyboard, our alpha, our beta and our gold and buddying up with someone to be able to help us review content and give us some, uh, some good feedback. Um, using that multimodal approach as well too. So mixing it up for the learners. Again, uh, if I wanted to just have screens like, um, well, probably like this um, slide presentation now, I think of it, uh, but screen after screen after screen, I could give them a PDF. So how am I going to mix it up? And we can mix it up through elements of video, elements of audio, uh, certainly interactions and the like, uh, case studies, storytelling. So there's a number of uh, elements and things available to us. So um, uh, take that approach where you can. And then finally, reuse as many assets as you can and, and take advantage of the gig economy. Again, if you go to places like Fiverr, so that's F I W -V E R, you can find people to you know, develop templates for you or interactions from you know, as little as five bucks through to a, maybe a couple hundred bucks, depending on the complexity of it. Always look at the good reviews that you might get there as well too, if you do take that path, make sure that you've got people who have you know, reliable histories that uh, can take on your gig um, and get things done for you. So. Um, some of you might have used Airtasker in the past. It's, it's very much that. It's Airtasker for technology. So to create templates, create artwork, create interactions and the like. Cool. So all I can say from there is, is happy building. Um, there's, there's a few basic tips we've given you in there which will sort of help you out on your, on your relearning journey, whether uh, you're just getting started or maybe some um, little tips and pointers there for you uh, if you're halfway through. But uh, obviously, uh, we'll be sending out that toolkit for you. Uh, if you have uh, follow-up questions, please um, uh, direct them to, uh, to either the Academy or, or, to, or to We Creators and we can get those uh, answered for you. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions now, if anybody has any questions now. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dean. Um, I think my first goal will be to try and get you visible <laughs> so that people can oh, see right. I'm not visible. I okay. don't think so. No, we didn't want to interrupt your... Um, uh, it session because it was very valuable. I guess as a first step, if you go down and to the left, there's a stop video button. Do you want to give that a try? Okay, let me try that. One moment. Let's jump out of this one because this one might be that might be the... causing confusion. Uh -huh. There I, I am. You. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so all that waving my hands around and everything. <laughs> really descriptive of what I was sort of saying to no one saw. That's no, it. unfortunately we didn't, but now we can see you. So everyone, this is Dean. Hi. Um, the guy who's been talking for the last half hour. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, super helpful and interesting to anyone who's sort of at that crux of either trying to bring face-to-face -face training online for the first time or somewhere on their journey there. Um, oh, we've just lost you again, Dean. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, and you're back. It's a complicated world out there. Um, so I've got a few questions of my own um, for you, Dean, and then I'll also, I've also had uh, one or two questions come through um, the question and answer um, as well. I might start off with a question from Harvey. Um, he was asking, it was just a minute or two ago actually, about what tools you use for feedback forms specifically. Yeah, generally, uh... There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do it within a, a module itself. So if you're using uh, tools like uh, Rise or Captivate, it can be done there. Um, honestly, it's not that great. Uh, generally, there'll be mechanisms within, within your uh, learning manage, management system that can do that. So if you want, um, it depends how you want to do it. I'm a big believer in, in socializing a lot of that sort of feedback. So um, 
it might take place in a forum or a blog. Uh, otherwise, we'll be using external tools. But I think, you know, the whole point uh, of creating good online education is, is wrapping, it up, uh, wrapping it up in a social setting. So uh, from the moment I start the course, or from the moment I log into the LMS, I can see there's a course available, there's a course upcoming, I can see conversation around that course, I can then do the course uh, and have conversation afterwards as well. Um, I didn't quite get that bit or can you tell me more about this bit or where do I find more information on this? Um, and, and you can have, you know, obviously your, your feedback uh, session in there as well. Sometimes feedback's very much one-on-one. -on -one. You can do it that way. You can have it as a group or you can have it as a sort of hidden survey approach. But I think the best place for it's uh, in the LMS. Okay, great. Thanks for that, uh, Dean. Um, I've got a question now from Ethan. Um, Wondering if you could weigh in on reduced attention spans and how you can sort of mitigate that, that situation or why you think that is happening. Yep. Uh, look, you know, uh, it, it's definitely there. I mean, I know it's even there for me. I mean, I think I've found out uh, more about my data consumption during this sort of period than, than I thought. You know, uh, I'm finding it hard to read a book at the moment, to be honest. I'm, I'm sort of going, OK, <laughs> well, just get me to the good bit, you know. Uh, it's a it's a it's a hard it's a hard one to sort of tackle but the way we uh, generally do it was something i touched on before and that is to obviously chunk down your content so um determining what's in or out based on what you, your subject matter expert is giving you um making sure you're not exceeding that four uh learning objectives so four um things you need your learners to know uh <clears throat> making sure that the uh, assessment supports uh the outcome uh, in, in regard to competence, so making sure that the questions that you've asked inside your assessment are the right ones to demonstrate their understanding of that content, and then making the, the seat time uh, smaller chunks that people can commit to. So if you go, need to go over four learning objectives or um, there is too much information, then chunk it down. And again, 20 minutes seems to be that sort of ideal time. A lot of people are talking about micro learning at the moment, so sometimes Sometimes a video will do, for example. So sometimes the, uh, I, I touched on very early in the session about whether it's to create awareness, whether it's, it's to um, uh, build on existing knowledge uh, or whether it's to change behavior. So based on uh, that can determine what type of asset you might build as well. So uh, it might just be a two minute video can solve the problem. So if it's to build awareness, hi, I'm the CEO. Today we're embarking on a new, uh, CRM installation, you're going to be part of this, uh, what to expect, what to see and where you'll find help. So yeah, really determine what the message is that you, you're trying to get across or what the education piece is. And if it's too big, if it exceeds that 20 minutes, try and chunk it down. Great, thank you. Um, just one comment, I think that quite a few people still can't see you, Dean. Oh, right. um, apologies to all of yeah. you out there. Not sure what, uh, to be honest, is, is happening. Um, so we'll take that on board for future sessions. Hopefully right now his, uh, his voice will be able to carry you through. And that is, I guess, where the information is coming from as well. So um, apologies for that. Um, moving to another question, which you actually, I think you actually touched on just now is what would your advice be for beginners, Dean? Um, you know, what if they were going to include a few very basic functionalities into a, like a learning platform? Like what would they be? Would it just be like a video? And then, yeah, thoughts on that? Yeah, look, so again, it comes down to that uh, storyboarding. And this is the hardest part when you're starting out. And we get, we get a lot of, a lot of organisations every year come to us in, in exactly the same spot. So, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, one of the, the biggest things that comes before all this is making sure if you're the person that's responsible for relearning, you've been given adequate, adequate time to be able to do that. You know, so often we see, you know, it might be, um, I don't know, the team leader for financial services, they've said to... Uh, to that person, okay, you're now building e-learning content, congratulations, and they walk away and expect them to do that on top of their normal day job. Uh, not very fair, um, <laughs> uh, because you're really, you're piling in a lot. Uh, so, you know, the, the first place I'd start if I was you know, building e-learning modules from scratch again, is I go to, I've said it about half a dozen times today, so sorry to harp on it, but uh, I go to e-learning heroes, just watch some of the tutorials, you know, the getting started videos on and what it takes to build content. Um, and then, you know, even, even practice something of your own. So build just a, a tiny course. You know, hopefully there's something, something is, that's, uh, that's useful for your organisation, but, um, you know, it might be a, 
a 10 minute module you build on effective time management. Um, so you can really practice and try out those skills. Uh, again, don't try and reinvent the wheel. If you try and build a, an e-learning course um, from beginning to end with a dozen interactions and a whole heap of video, it'll take you forever and you probably won't be happy with the end result. So start with something really basic, um, choose the two or three elements. So is it video, is it interaction, uh, is it audio that you want to implement um, and, and practice on that dummy piece first. Uh, you, know, you won't regret that, it'll, it'll just uh, flush out a lot of those types of skills. Um, if, you, if you do go to a vendor, um, you can, you don't have to, you know, um, uh, get war and peace created. You might just say to them, okay, create me a template that I can use to get started. And those little template kits, uh, we could probably even arrange to put one of those, I think, Eric, inside the, the toolkit. So okay. you can see what a basic uh, course looks like and just put your own information into that. Yeah, nice. And I guess from our, from Academy XI's point of view, um, I mentioned re really early on that we use two different uh, learning management systems. And the reason for that is that one of them is quite simple, straightforward, um, pretty easy to spin up uh, training mod modules and that. And then one of them uh, is more like sort of the, we call it like our, our Cadillac of, of LMSs. And we actually use that to solve one of the questions that happened earlier, which was around, um, you know, how do you, reduce shortened attention spans. And the, the way that that LMS combats that is through social engagement. So it sort of has Facebook equivalent um, social aspects built into it. Um, and so we basically decide, you know, what length, what, what complexity of, of course are we trying to build here? And then we choose the LMS based on that. And I think that can be done sort of no matter what sort of group of, of learning uh, platforms you're using. So, yeah. Um, moving on to another question uh, from Freya. Um, what's your opinion? Is it possible to create behavior or change through online training? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, uh, again, I, I'm a big believer that in that, uh, you know, online education isn't it uh, as far as learning goes. I think you still need uh, that human element uh, around it. Um, to change behaviour, look, absolutely. It all depends on how you how you do that. One of the ways that uh, that we do that, for example, um, is to get the learner as actively involved in the education as possible. So there's nothing worse than you know, and you've probably seen a lot of this. But a lot of people are complaining at the moment about you know webinar fatigue. That's because they're not really involved. You know, they're sitting there being droned to and going, oh god, what did this guy just say? And you know, how is that relevant to me? And uh, and all the rest. So, uh, a good way to do uh, that is through uh, interactive uh, uh, exercises or, or, or scenarios, giving the learner the option to uh, make decisions uh, within those scenarios and showing the impacts of those decisions. Um, a good example is uh, some work we did with uh, with Vic Roads uh, a while back, um, uh, talking about. Um, uh, safe driving for, for 15 year olds plus that are they're out there on the roads and you know uh, looking at you know if you do get an extra person in the car if you do have that uh, extra drink you know don't just say it's wrong tell them why it's wrong and what the future implications of, of getting that wrong could be um, and they're, they're good ways to, uh, to influence that change and, and certainly change that behavior so if you think about you know um, TAC for example with their messaging you know, you'll drive along the freeway and you'll see a one line, uh, you know, um, uh, driving tired is as good as driving drunk, you know, and perhaps something fairly really graphic as far as illustration goes next to it. So think of those types of approaches that um, can really open up people's minds to think. Uh, and again, I sort of mentioned uh, before as well about, uh, about the social side of things to give them a forum to ask those additional questions. We don't want learners just to, to sheep dip them, say, right, we've ticked that box and, and off you go. Uh, you need the opportunity to, uh, in an online world, just as you do with a, in a classroom world, uh, to sit back after class and ask some of those questions. Great, thank you. Um, moving down to a question from Asim, um, oh, which I've just lost, hold on. Uh, I'm not sure where it's gone, but I think I remembered. He's asked um, around D2L. Yep. I'm hoping you know what that is. Since I, know. I know what that is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually a competitor of mine, but uh, look, you know, uh, it's a good tool. Um, you know, that's a good tool. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of really good, there's over 900 uh, learning management systems out there. 
uh, at the moment. Um, you know, I, I'm biased towards my tools, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but, but D2L, yeah, is, is a, an equally good, uh, or it's an equally, but it is a very good platform. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's uptake in North America has been uh, very big. It's starting to get some reasonable traction down here uh, across AP uh, as well. Um, but yeah, they've got a, a good roadmap for their product. It's a nice, clean product. It has a good uh, UI. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I'd um, say that uh, I have used it and yeah, it's a decent sort of product. Okay, and I guess actually a good follow on from that is Ethan's asking, um, I'm not sure what the context exactly is, but around that market saturation piece um, with so many like sort of yep. uh, learning delivery platforms like Udemy, Pluralsight, Skillshare, um, are there still opportunities out there? I'm not sure if that's sort of, is there a, is there a, a scenario where you do still need to build from scratch courses, or is there always an existing already built solution out there? Oh, uh, look, I'd say, I'd say, so scroll down, uh, Ethan, yeah, I'd say there's absolutely uh, still opportunities out there. Um, we're seeing the rise of these, you know, uh, online uh, platforms, call them, you'd almost call them content aggregators, uh, where, where there's sort of so much there. Uh, people still have um, the desire, I think, uh, desire to learn maybe. Um, uh, the desire to seek out tools for or seek out courses that are, that are a specialty and niche. So a lot of um, uh, organisations that come to us, so some some of them come to us for uh, reproductive health, um, baby nurturing, um, uh, uh, mach heavy machinery uh, operation uh, that belong in their own uh, niche uh, environments or niche markets, if you like. Um, Coursera, for example, and most of the, the sites that you mentioned there, uh, a lot of them are sort of, you know, higher ed uh, type sites. Um, a lot of them uh, American based as well, too. So uh, if you want something that is uh, specific to market, you just got to figure out what that space in the market is. I mean, to give you an example, we had uh, a customer of ours who's been with us for a few years now um, create just an awareness course. It wasn't a certification per se, but just an awareness course on radiation hazard awareness. Um, and, you know, she now gets, uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred hits or uh, transactions per month uh, on that learning site. Uh, a lot of Telstra employees do it. A lot of uh, uh, Optus employees do it. A lot of telecommunications companies take part in, you know, uh, awareness around operating under, you know, overhead power lines and the like. And she charges, I think, about, you know, $160 per, per course or whichever it is. But her site's just dedicated to that. Um, and I think people like that uh, surely, okay, they're the expert in that. So that's where I'm going to go. Uh, I'm not going to troll through. Another good example is if you go to Udemy, for example, and you type in uh, courses on how to create an e-learning course, you'll get a hundred different responses. You know, which one do you really choose? How do you know that they're an expert in the field? So yeah, definitely there's, um, there's a space for all. Great. Yeah, thanks, Dean. So we're just about at our hour. So there were still a few questions to go. Unfortunately, we won't uh, make it to all of them. Um, I probably yep. have time for one more if we just go quickly. So I'm just happy to down. answer those as well, too, and send them out in the um, follow-up. Sure. Okay. Maybe let's do that then, just in the interest of time. Um, so just as a as last um, thought, I just wanted to thank you, Dean, for, for taking the time um to deliver that i think it was very interesting for me um and hopefully for for everyone listening and as well um for myself personally it's uh, it's interesting to see like we're quite different organizations in some way but very similar as well like we're more of the the people providing that technical like subject matter expert knowledge and then our sort of challenge that we embarked upon a few years ago was you know what are the online tools that we use to deliver that training whereas with yourself, it's people coming to you with the subject matter expert knowledge and sort of, so they have that knowledge, but not sure how to, how to, you know, bring it out to the world and then, you know, sort of build a platform where other people can then take in that information. So although we've, uh, we almost come from opposite ends of the spectrum, we've ended up using some of the same tools. So thank you again for, um, for your sort of take on that. Uh, some people have been asking about the slides um, and uh, if this has been recorded, uh, yes to both. Um, so we will ma be making that available. Um, I'd also like to invite everyone to a session that we have going on 
two weeks from now. Um, and that is actually more on Academy XI's journey to port all of our face-to-face -face courses, of which there are many, over to uh, online formats in the world of COVID, which we've done fairly successfully over the past few months. Um, so they actually be quite sort of a candid, transparent look um, inside a training organization that has been moving all their face-to-face -face courses at scale over to the online format. And fairly successfully, we've had actually quite a few um, like NPS scores, uh, satisfaction scores go up in the online format previous um, to face-to-face, -face, which is pretty, pretty incredible in a way. So yeah, that'll be coming up in two weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, any last words from you, Dean, before we part ways? No, that's all again. We'll send out that uh, toolkit in the link, but uh, I'm always happy to have a conversation too. I'd love to catch up with you with the coffee, but um, if you wanted to schedule any, any time, I'm always uh, available to do that. So just um, reach out on LinkedIn uh, directly, or uh, you can also follow us on our socials as well, just on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Yep. Great. Thanks, Dean. And I mean, if anyone ever has any questions in um, or is looking to develop training in our specialization areas, um, so design and digital, uh, by all means, reach out. We'll shoot a, an email, yeah, with that information um, and contact details, uh, most likely tomorrow. So thank you very much again and uh, have a great day. Thanks, guys. Stay safe.